What's up? What's up? Hey, man. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Dude, thanks for spending a few minutes with me uh, this afternoon. Uh, just... Absolutely. Have we ever done anything before? Yeah, we we talked. Uh, I I've grown my hair really long and, and grown my beard to an egregious length. Very Viking. Uh, very 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 striking Viking, if I must say. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. But yeah, I, I think it was like uh, 21, maybe. I mean, it was like right out the everything sort of fine after the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's the last time you and I talked. Uh, but yeah, man, thank you so much for for spending a few minutes with me, man. No, man, thanks for taking the time to uh, talk about the show and what's going on. I appreciate you. Yeah, so let's let's talk about it. So this coming Monday, End Market Arena, yeah. April 17th, you, yeah. Three Days Grace from Ashes to New, obviously, Brent Smith is shining down because everyone's going to be watching this here shortly. Um, very excited for this show. Tickets available right now, Ticketmaster.com. Now, with this show, I've been checking out some, I've been, I've been cheating. I'm not going to lie. I've been cheating. I've been okay. on the TikToks. I've been on the Instagrams. I've seen the production that you guys are putting on, the staging, the lighting. It's incredible. So when it came to creating all of that, when it came to creating all that, did you have your hands in that? Or did you just show up on stage on the first show and you're like, holy shit, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, no. it's um, There is definitely a massive brain trust um, when it comes to this band. Um, you know, there's four individuals in this band. Um, and we all have a say in everything over the years, you know, right around 2012, um, with the Amaryllis record, which was our fourth album. That's when we really started to dive into production hardcore. Um, right. that was the first time that we started to use pyrotechnics and things of that nature and really bring that into what we do on a larger scale. Fast forward to where we are now. Um, I have to give a lot of credit to Zach Myers, though, on this particular stage show. This is his design, along with another gentleman by the name of uh, Mitch Schillinger. Uh, Mitch and a guy by the name of uh, Court Lawrence and Zach and myself worked on the Attention Attention album and that production, which was, you know, going to a, another level at the time for us. Right. Um, but this specific show, we constantly are we're talking about doing things in the round for like the last decade. And we wanted to, and Zach wanted to do something close to that, but not a hundred percent, but still giving a 360 juxtaposition. So the thrust is literally the stage instead of it being kind of traditional long form that you would see. It's kind of like you take this and the idea was to do this, you know, and turn it where it was vertical. So you're going out close to like the center of these arenas. So you are getting kind of an in the round type of thing. Um, but the other thing too was hiding all of the pyrotechnics underneath the stage and putting a lot more pyro in the air, the video components, the lighting components, the, and you know, the, the fact that we're using mobilators. So like the stage is actually moving right. and just really trying to give people a, kind of surreal experience and you don't kind of know what's going to happen from song to song what is the stage going to do now and it's constantly kind of evolving and wrapping itself around the audience so there's a lot of thought that's put into it but for this particular stage show zach had a a, a big hand in kind of its creation are you nervous at all at missing your cues like oh i forgot the stage moves here and i'm gonna fall down like post malone famously did last year and hurt yourself or like be a little too close to the fight you know the the fireworks and pyrotechnics are you nervous at all or are you like i got this you know the thing about that is is when you're dealing with um any kind of product that is going to um create a spark an explosion a flame uh, you have to be really, really careful for the margin of error. Um, mm -hmm. I've had a few close calls that were my fault where I had missed my mark, but luckily we have the, 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 the by far the most amazing pyro company, uh, in the world, Pyrotech, you know, um, and yeah, you you want to rehearse as much as you possibly can, but we have spotters. So like you have our shooter that'll be on the side that has a sight line of everything that we're doing. And then we have a secondary because um, our shooter's name is Keegan and our secondary who's like really making sure that we're safe, uh, which is Maddie, um, who's like walking at all times. He has a total sight to like let, 
you know, Keegan know what's okay. going on and things of that nature. Um, uh, but yeah, man, there's always, you know, if you don't know where you're at, you know, uh, something bad could happen, but we've been lucky that, you know, that's not really occurred. Um, anytime that you build these big production, I mean, there's always going to be uh, a question mark there, but that's why you rehearse, man. That's why there's choreography. Well, if anything ever happens, I'm blaming Zach. I, none of your staff. I'm just <laughs> immediately to Zach, just so you know, he's, he's too much of a troublemaker. I don't like him. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Brett, uh, I was he's our troublemaker. Up. Right. We love him. We love him. He's the adorable little brother. Um, so I I was looking up. You're 45. That's what the Internet tells me, at least. I'm That's 40. True. I know how I feel when I wake up after a good workout or a night at a show. But you're on stage and I've seen your performances. You give it everything, man. And you are running across that stage. You are not getting blown up by fireworks and stuff. I mean, like, <laughs> what hurts the most after a show? Or are you so high on adrenaline? You don't feel anything until, like, maybe the next day or maybe the next couple of days. So I'll tell you this, man. This year has been something that uh, I've been researching. In answer to your question, a lot of times in the morning, it's my lower back will be a little rough. Um, you know, I um, – the big thing for me is – you know, a decade ago when I really started making diet and exercise a part of my life, because from 2011 to 2012, I had to make a big conscious decision with my health. I lost 70 pounds. Um, I started to learn how to eat right, how to exercise correctly. And, you know, my weight will fluctuate sometimes, but I, I, I keep myself pretty much in check. I, I love being on tour because it, it makes me have to be in really good shape. Um, because that's the thing, like we're not mannequins up there. Some artists will kind of stand in one place so they don't move as, you know, necessarily the way we do. Um, but all four of us are, we're, we're giving it everything that we have because that's also the type of presence that we want to project on stage. Like we're not really good being stationary, but something for me that's really changed um, a lot is I started this year uh, doing cold plunges and I began to take cold oh, wow. showers and stop taking hot showers. Um, and there's how, just how a that massive, it, there's just some very point blank legitimate science behind it. You know, like if you tear a muscle or you sprain something or you injure something, what nine times out of 10, what, what, what occurs, you swell up. What do you do? You put ice on it. So it's the same kind of concept with cold plunges and your entire body. Like it eliminates, um, it just eliminates inflammation. It produces epinephrine in the body. Um, it speeds up the oxygenation in your bloodstream uh, by like within three minutes of doing a cold plunge. Um, I think your circulatory system expands its oxygen by like 400%. So it releases all these healing chemicals and things of that nature also speeds up your metabolism. And it just, uh, it's been a game changer for me because it really cuts down on the inflammation. And, uh, so I would, I would tell people to do their research on it first. There's, there's a right and wrong way to do it. Um, the other thing too, is there's a misconception that like cold plunges and, and all that you need to be in there for like a long period of time. You don't need any more than three minutes and 30 seconds, four minutes max. If you're doing showers, cold showers, you don't need more than eight minutes. Right. Um, but, uh, it's, it's been a game changer for me. Uh, I'll be honest, as far as like my overall health and just, uh, it's really cut down on the inflammation. I'm telling you, I'm sold. I'm, I'm literally, I'm going to go take a cold shower potentially after this, if not tomorrow morning, like, like I got to yeah. figure this out. You sold me on it. Well, you, you talked about your weight fluctuating a little bit. I'm a radio guy. My flake, do, uh, my weight doesn't, it doesn't fluctuate. It just stays at that, uh, egregiously sort of not obese, but very close to obese level. Um, so my question for you is because I, I found an old interview. You got to move, man. That's the biggest thing. You just, you got to find time to move. Yes. Yeah. So I found this interview that you did back in 2019 and mm. you're in Europe, you're on tour and you talked about your love of, of, uh, club sandwiches, how you went on a street oh leveling up the club sandwich, like hype to an utter, like you, you convinced me to go get a club sandwich. Like I, I have to go do that soon. So now that you're on tour, you're only like nine or tour, 10 tour dates into this current tour. Have you found a food? I don't even know if we're that, that, that far into it, actually. Um, I think, yeah. yeah, well, no, you're right. Probably like nine or so. I lose count sometimes. <laughs> well, what is, is there a food right now that, you know, you're kind of cheating on your diet on? Is there something out there that is getting you through the day when you're not wanting to really move forward? 
the thing about being on tour sometimes is that you are burning an excess of way more calories when you tour mm -hmm. um because you're not um you know a lot of times people will say it's um it's a lot of hurry up and wait on tour but not for us like we we kind of run everything kind of almost like a military timeline because we have to um you know touring industry is the only industry where you have no choice but to be on time right you know um and uh so you're constantly moving and like we work out before we play and everybody works out usually roughly between four to six mm -hmm. um and then show times are at nine um and so that kind of helps with your metabolism kind of being you know on 11 while you're out um but like with anything the thing that I allow myself to have, and I don't feel like guilty about it, is I have an absolute love, yes, of club sandwiches, but they're harder to get than you would think um, at, at certain points in times. But I have a love for, I have a love of Oreos. I have Ooh. my whole life. So what I will normally do is I'll give myself two Oreos a lot of times at night because um, that's about. And they're double stuffed. I ain't gonna lie to you. Are you dunking uh, them with right. milk, or is this you just raw dog? Just, them? No, I just just two of them. You know, sometimes I'll do four, um, but like so, two Oreos double stuffed. That's about 140 calories. All right. And so, if you break it down like that, the problem with that it's not the calories; it's the sugar. Mm -hmm. And that again can be something where sugar's not good for your voice. It's not good for inflammation. It's all yeah. these kinds of things. But when you're on tour everything is moving everything is stretched out everything is warmed up for the most part you can kind of cheat here and there but at the end of the day man you you for me what i've learned also just with diet and exercise is that a good friend of mine once told me if you feed your body life it'll give you life if you feed your body death it'll give you death and, <laughs> and that might be a hardcore way of looking at it he's a vegetarian right um, of course <laughs> but yeah. So, I mean, obviously I'm trying to get as many, you know, I'm trying to get as much, you know, vegetables and fruits as I can that are good, you know, with complex carbs and, you know, the right kind of simple sugars and things of that nature. But there's a lot of protein we eat out here, man. You just have to, just to lean, just to stay lean. Yeah. Yeah. But you, but just to make everyone at home feel good, you are housing some Oreos at night. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And it was East. And here's the thing too. It was Easter and I have another, uh, I ain't gonna lie to you. I have a weakness for Reese's cups, you Ooh, know, chocolate and peanut nuts. butter. It chocolate and peanut butter was the greatest combo ever. Perfect. You know, and, and anybody that says any different is a Satanist. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so no offense to Satanists, but that's what All we're right. gonna do. Yeah. But you know, the the point of it is is man, sometimes you just gotta do you have to do it sometimes. Like because my whole outlook is this. Like if you love chocolate cake. Eat chocolate cake. Just don't eat it every day. If you love cheeseburgers, eat a cheeseburger. Just don't eat it every day. Yep. Those are they're called cheat days for a reason. Try to yeah, keep everything it in moderation. <laughs> everything in moderation. So uh I saw a recent interview with uh Lars Ulrich, drummer of Metallica. I'm sure you're familiar with him and his work. Yeah. Uh, they got a brand new album, speaking of, coming out tomorrow. But he it's talked great, about by the way. It's a great What's record. That? Oh, have it's you heard it? Record. Awesome. I've heard uh, probably more than than some have heard. I just love the fact that every song is like seven minutes long. Yeah, these guys <laughs> are just like, going off. <laughs> like, we whatever we want. <laughs> well, in a recent interview, he talked about how he's fifty nine. He wants to go for another decade. The band wants to go for another decade playing metal. You know that they're they're going to be almost seventy, according to him, and they're still going to be on the road playing shows. When you hear something like that. First of all, do you think that son of a bitch? <laughs> Why do you have to do that for the rest of us? But I mean, is no, that man. something that you even think about when it comes to shine down? Do you even think that far in the future? Or are you just like, I'm just on to the next day. I'm not on to the next decade, like Lars maybe. To the wheels fall off. Right. To the wheels fall off, man. That's what we want like, to hear, man. Yeah, dude. You this isn't a yes, we're here's the thing, man. When it comes to this band, when it comes to who we are, the only reason that we are here is because of the audience. The only reason that we're here is, you know, we started 20 years ago 
And a lot of that was built off terrestrial radio and what you guys and girls had done for us and, and, and how you presented it to us, even with the evolution of how the music industry has changed and the consumption of music and things of that nature. We have one boss in this band, only one. It just happens to be everybody in the audience. And as long <laughs> as they want to see us play, we're going to constantly level up. It's just the way that we're built. So when I think about Metallica and I think about um, you know, what they are achieving and how they're able to continue to do it. That's through hard work, man. And, you know, I got to give credit in a lot of ways to Lars Ulrich too, especially in the last few years, because there was a moment in time, it's no secret, there was a moment in time where like people were dogging him on his playing and what have you. But I will tell you this because we have some people in our organization that work with them as well and have been part of their crew for quite some time. And the fact is, I don't know if people really realize this, but that guy 1000% heard what people were saying about him and he consciously made a decision and you could see it and hear it in the last like probably five, six years that dude has become a monster on the drums yeah. and like his playing is exceptional now. And I mean, he's doing, he's playing the drums better than ever. So I think it's mind over matter in a lot of these things, but like, you know, age is just a number, man. It literally is just a number. It doesn't reflect what you can or cannot do. You have to remember though, also we were talking about fitness and health and everything of that mm -hmm. nature. Your body is your temple. You know what I mean? And for me, being a singer, you know, I can't plug up my instrument. If I drop a stick or something like that, I can't grab a new one and what have you. So, um, you know, part of what I do, it's essential to take care of myself and, you know, make sure that I maintain my my voice and things of that nature. And, you know, I work with three other gentlemen that put just as much work into their craft and what they do as, you know, musicians, as performers. It has to work together. I think that what you know about people that even as they age and this kind of music, when you're playing this style of music, um, it has to be something that you truly, truly will just sacrifice everything for, you right. know, because it's not for everybody, you know, and we all have families that we love more than anything and but they understand what it is we do they don't get mad at us when we go out on tour they don't get upset if we're not there all the time you know technology has helped out with that and what have you but they mm -hmm. also know that this is what we wanted to do from the moment we were born literally um and they appreciate that but at the end of the day it's a craft and you know when you're a live musician in order to get good you have to play all the time like it's just part of it so I commend everybody in Metallica and I commend anybody that doesn't phone it in like that is constantly trying to make sure that they're at the top of their game too. And I know Lars has gotten some flack for that over the years, but that dude now, like I said, last four or five years, I mean, he is just playing better than ever. Yeah, I, I can't wait to actually sit down and listen to their new album. And obviously you have a new album. So still, it's still fresh. I mean, it's not even a year old. The, the baby nope. that is Planet Zero obviously came out July 1st. Well, I wanted to say thank you for spending some time with me. But before you know, we, we part ways, obviously we'll see you on Monday at the End Market yeah. Arena. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, and I don't think a lot of people know about it because I just randomly came upon it on, a, on the Ticketmaster page. Uh, you're partnered with Plus One. And that's $1 per ticket goes to supporting the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. So yep. can you just talk a little bit about that real quick before we, we jump off here and about how great uh, that organization is and how we're helping out? So um, about a decade ago, we uh, found out about this organization called the AFSP, which stands for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, which is an extraordinary organization of men and women um, and we consider ourselves ambassadors for them. And so on this particular tour, um, when we were able to bring our friends, uh, Three Days Grace and, and our boys in from Ashes to New on this, we asked them if they would be OK um, with uh, taking one dollar from every ticket sold on this tour and uh, give that tax free 
to the AFSP and they signed up immediately. Um, why it's so important is because um, it's about discussion and it's about talking about a very, very sensitive subject um, that is very difficult for people to talk about and that's suicide. And, you know, we live in a world and, you know, we're a band that's been talking about mental health for the better part of two decades before it was in media and before it was kind of put to the forefront of, you know, headlines and things of that nature. And, you know, we've said it before, um, you know, we want people to understand how important their mental health is for not only themselves, but for the people around them and this gift of life that we've been given because we're not promised tomorrow. And for the longest time, we saw, especially with anxiety and clinical depression, that when we would talk to certain people about this, and because we have a lot of experience with it, um, the number one thing that people said that really broke my heart in a lot of ways was that they were embarrassed or they were ashamed to ask for help, or they thought that they were going to be made fun of or pigeonholed or put into a corner. And that was just not something that we were able to accept. And we wanted to become a voice with the AFSP and learn from them and talk about the real statistics yearly in regards to suicide and suicide prevention. Because we want people to understand there are people out there that can help you. And by far, you do not need to feel embarrassed or ashamed to ask for help. There's nothing wrong with you. Absolutely nothing. And, you know, if anything, it makes you even you know, it makes you more brave to actually say something. And we constantly will tell people, too, like. You know, if you have a friend or a family member or somebody that you can see there's something kind of off behind the eyes and they're acting different or you're noticing some changes in them, the worst thing that you could do is be quiet. The worst thing that you could do is not say something to them. Go to them and ask them what's going on. Have them talk to you because you could potentially save their life. And I know a lot of times people talk about, you know, this world is a very, you know, scary place to navigate sometimes, but it's also a beautiful place and that's why it's a journey that's why it's called life in the first place we're all a work in progress but we encourage people to not be afraid of failure to go after what they want to do even if they fail over and over and over again there's going to be a moment when you know a light bulb goes off and it clicks the fact of the matter is is you're not going to be your your life and your legacy won't be built by failure your life and your legacy will be built by the fact that you refuse to give up and part of that is empowering people and making feel making people feel good about themselves, not taking away the struggle. You need the struggle. you got to have the struggle so that you appreciate it. But the AFSP is just an extraordinary group of people. And, um, you know, it's a very tense and difficult subject to talk about. But it's uh, it's beyond an epidemic. And we're trying to take that percentage every year of national suicide and the national suicide rate. Uh, we're trying to get that as low as we can each and every year. Um, and that's why we partnered with them. So if you're thinking about going to the show, you haven't gone to the show yet, or you haven't, you know, you, you don't know if you're going to go to the show yet or this and that and the other, just understand. And if you've already bought a ticket, thank you very, very much. So for, you know, every ticket sold $1 that goes to the AFSP, we've already raised like close to $150,000. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty extraordinary and it's a great cause and it's a wonderful organization. And they actually do, um, they actually do create change and awareness and uh, they're, they're really helping to get that percentage of the suicide rate yearly. They're helping to get it down. Well, thank you for your work with them. Really, it was so great to see that. We've done some stuff locally. Uh, here in Georgia and on the South Carolina side uh, with the uh, with the organization there. So that's that's very, very cool. Once Thank again, you for doing that. Yeah, Brent Smith, man, so great to see you again, my friend. I can't wait you to too, see brother. this coming Monday and Market Arena, the Revolutions Live Tour. I've been saying this for like the last four months. And now I'm like, I'm sick of saying it. I'm ready to go. And I'm sure you yeah, are. Man. Ted and Savannah, We're Three Days Grace, so, you so. From ashes to new, tickets available. Hit up rock1061.com. Hit up ticketmaster.com. And we'll we'll both see you. We'll both see you at the show. Absolutely. And you can also go to shinedown.com for ticket information. You can go to uh, From Ashes to New, their website as well, which is just simply from ashes to new.com and go to three days, uh, three days grace.com for ticket information as well. Everybody come out. I know it's a Monday night. All the more reason to throw down at the rock show. You only live once, so get out. Hell yeah, man. Rock show, guys. <laughs> Brent, thank you so much for your time, man. I really do appreciate it once again, and then I'll, I'll see you in a couple days. 
All right. I appreciate all your uh, just all the the support, the promotion, uh, the love and the respect, man. It's mutual. Thank you very much. All right, man. You have a great rest of your day. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye bye.